guys. Welcome back to the sawmill. It is Saturday. I'm a day behind on work here. I didn't get anything accomplished yesterday. I did get this thing over here put together right there. More on that later. But let's head on that to the kiln and see what the temperature is and do a quick moisture reading of the lumber because I think we're about ready to sterilize that load. All right, guys, this is day number 10 of this drying cycle. We're hanging out around 130 degrees. The wet bulb, I'm not really concerned with that number. The water is probably running low in the reservoir inside the kiln. And the moisture was so low about a day ago, it's not really pulling much out of the air. And uh, as of yesterday morning, the moisture content was around 11% on most of the nine quarter slabs. The four quarter on the very bottom was down to eight. So we'll go inside and take a reading. And if everything's around eight or 9%, We'll go ahead and turn on our lights and set that dry bulb for 150 and start the sterilization process, which means we want to heat up that wood to 130 degrees. And we accomplish that by heating up this kiln to 150. And once it reaches 150 degrees, we will hold it there for 24 hours and then shut the kiln down, open up the vents and do another 24 hour period of letting the lumber kind of cool off on its own. And then we'll open up the doors and bring it out, put another load in, because I got plenty here to dry. All right, guys, real briefly here, let's talk about moisture meters. I get a lot of uh, emails and DMs on Instagram about moisture meters. Since I started sawmilling back in 2011, I've used several different kinds, and this one here is the best one I have found. This right here is a Delmhurst, and uh, this blue tape on here is because I broke the little snap back here where the battery goes, so just look over that. That has nothing to do with the design of it. Now, this is a pin meter. It has these two pins at the top. That's for short, you know, three-quarter inch material. And these are not insulated. You can jab these pins in your stock and see what the moisture is pretty fast. I try to keep it covered up if I'm not using it because I was running out of band-aids, if you know what I mean. Right here, you have a connector and this cable, which goes to this hammer probe right here. So this right here is why this meter really does better than any other meter does. The pinless meters that you see, there's several different companies that make them. And they're okay, but you really can't read eight and nine quarters stock. Most of them go about three quarters of an inch down. And that's about as deep as you can read them. Right here we have an inch and a half probe right here on this top. And this is insulated. This green area right here does not take a reading at all. It's insulated. So if some of this is exposed and you don't have this drive down all the way into your stock, this is not going to mess up your reading. The only part that does the reading is the very end here on the tips of it. And I think these are inch and a half. I have, I think, two inch ones as well. But inch and a half is more than good enough to get to the center of two inch and nine quarter stock because that's where your moisture is going to be hiding that when you're kiln drying. The moisture on the outside of the slab is easy to draw out in the kiln, but that moisture that's holding tight in the very center of the wood is the hardest to get out. And these probes right here enable you to get into that stock and make sure your moisture is coming out. Now the only downside of this meter are these little tips. They're kind of expensive and they will break on you. And what you do is you put this on the wood and you drive it down in there. And it works great, you just have to make sure these don't try to spread apart as it goes in. This one's already bent just a little. Even though this is bent, it is not affected at all. You'll still get an accurate reading when you use it. You just gotta be careful on that. But this meter is great. Like I said, it's the only one that I use now because it's accurate every time. You set your species. I got it on 47. I'm tilted it right there if you guys could see. Right there. Got set on 47. Well, I went to 48 right there, but 47 is for walnut. This is also another good feature of this meter. I'm trying to tilt it so the light is not blaring in there. I got it set for 130 degrees right now. That's the temperature of the kiln. So that's a very good feature because you set the temperature exactly to the building that the lumber's in. For instance, my shop this morning is probably about 50 degrees in here. And I would set that at 50 to get an accurate reading. When I go inside the kiln in just a minute, it's going to be about 130 degrees inside the kiln. So you set that for 130. 
And if you don't set that, it's gonna throw you off because it has to really make up those differences in the temperature of the wood. And uh, speaking about temperatures of wood, if I set this for 70 degrees and the building is 70 degrees, it takes the wood about four hours to acclimate to that temperature, especially inside the kiln. That's how long it takes. So you know that's gonna be the accurate reading that you get. I could probably do a whole video just on moisture meters and how to read the, uh, the levels of lumber when you're drying it. I talked to my buddy Tim Fuller the other night and it's kind of crazy. It's the things that keep you up at night and kiln drying will keep you up at night because there's so many different variables in there. There's just so much information you gotta obtain to do it correctly. It's a whole other science aside from sawmilling. It's a lot more technical, I think. So like I said, this meter's great. I'll put a link down below. You can get these on Amazon. I think I got mine off eBay from one of their distributors. It's about $600. It's the best $600 you'll ever spend if you're running a sawmill or a kiln. You gotta have one of these. And if you're a woodworker, you also really need one because you wanna make sure your wood's dry when you're building stuff with it. A little disclaimer, guys. I don't work for Delmhurst. They don't pay me to do this. I had to buy this meter. It's just a really good tool. You know, my buddy Robert and Danny down in Georgia, they've sawed, you know, millions of board feet of lumber in their careers and dried probably just about as much. And this is the meter they've always used. That's saying a lot from those two guys because they do it better than about anybody that I know of. And once again, there's a link down below to Amazon. Check these things out. And uh, don't go to Harbor Freight or Lowe's and buy those cheap ones, guys. You will regret it and it's not accurate. Spend the extra money and buy a Delmhurst. You'll be so much better off and you'll know what your lumber is.